Hello everyone, welcome back to the awesome goalkeeper. Today we are going to be going through who I think is going to be your best performer in the Premier League this season. So every single club in the Prem, all 20 clubs, I'm going to be going through. You might be like, well, why are you doing a Premier League uh, video when you're not in a Premier League shirt? Happier now? So let's go through who I think is going to be your best performer. We're going to go in alphabetical order, so let's go. Okay, so for number one, we are going for Arsenal, and Arsenal, I think it's going to be Bukayo Saka. Now, I know you could be like, well, what about their new signings? Ramsdale was solid in goal last season, they've got Gabriel Jesus, and stuff like that. But Bukayo Saka, he's come through the Youth Academy, he's already proving himself to be a solid England player, whether that's starting or on the bench and you have to be a very very good player to play for England because they are one of the favourites to win the World Cup and that's something that is going to be a heavy theme in this video the World Cup because a lot of these players are going to want to have a great great season so their country sees them and they're like yeah we need them in the team we need them in the team Mikai Saka wants to prove himself he was in the Euro squad last year but the World Cup squad this year is what he wants to be in Arteta is doing a very very good job Arsenal fans used to be chanting Arteta out, but now they think they're chanting Arteta in because they're seeing the project that he's doing and he is building Arsenal up from their ruins. And I do think that Bukayo Saka is going to have a great, great season this year. So before I do Aston Villa, I just want to um, remind you guys, please ha hit that subscribe button and please smash a like. It'd be greatly appreciated. And also share this across WhatsApp or Snapchat or Instagram, whatever you use to your friends so hopefully we can get a wider audience and if you enjoy videos like this comment down below and let me know and who knows i'm able to get daft and game on this someday so yes next up aston villa i mean they've had a really 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 good summer transfer window with diego carlos camera felipe coutinho coming in on a permanent it's actually felipe coutinho that i'm going to go for i think that he is going to do an incredible job he was great last year on loan stevie g's got him in obviously ex-teammates at liverpool He's brought him back. Coutinho wants to prove himself again. I mean, what is he now, 29, 30 years old? Aston Villa is the best place for him. It's the place for him to stay, to prove himself back in the Premier League. And I think this is going to be the revival of his career. Right, next up is Brentford. And for Brentford, I'm going to go Christopher Ayer. Yeah, I'm not going for an attack. I'm not going for Ivan Turney, Buemo. I'm going for Christopher Ayer. The Danish centre-back. I think he is going to do another great job this season. He is um, he's a he's pretty good player. He's like 23. I think he's going to be 24 at the start of this season. He's a rock-solid centre-back. He's proved himself last year. Didn't cost him much. Did not cost him much at all. And he's already proved his worth. And Brentford, I think, are going to have another solid mid-season finish this year. They might be coming close to relegation because that seems to be the trend. If you survive your first year, the second year, you get a little bit closer to relegation before you fully build yourself out of that for the newly promoted teams, such as Aston Villa and stuff like that. And so I think that it's got to be Christopher I Next up, we have Brighton and I'm going to go for a new signing. Dennis Undav. I think... There's no way you can do that well in the Belgium Pro League and not carry that over into the Prem. But I honestly just think he's going to do insanely well this season. The XG for Brighton is incredible. Like, honestly, it's it's huge. And Neil Morpé just could not slot them home. But Dennis Undav has proved himself in Belgium as a top quality goal scorer. And if he can carry that over into the Prem with the sort of opportunities he's going to be given. He's in my FPL. He's in a lot of people's FPL. And... I just think he's going to do insanely well. So, yeah, Dennis Undav, I'm going to predict that he's going to score over 10 goals, potentially 15 goals this year. I know it's his first season in the Premier League, and you could be like, well, that's a bit of a bold decision, but he's a striker. Right, and definitely um, a dark horse heading into this, this Premier League season. So, yeah, keep an eye out for Undav. Next up, um, it's going to be Bournemouth. So, for Bournemouth... I think, I mean, Bournemouth is a really, really hard one because I don't really know much about Bournemouth. I mean, I could go, um, you know what, I'm going to go away from what I actually wrote down, um, which is what I'm looking at my notes. I'm actually going to go for Jaden Anthony. 
Jaden Anthony, he's like 21, 22 years old. He's he's a really young winger. He proved himself last year. Um, some people could be saying, well, you could go for Kiefer Moore. He's the one that scored the winning goal that actually confirmed their promotion. And you could say that, but I think we should definitely um, think about Jaden Anthony. Now, maybe he might not be starting every game, but the games that he does play, I think he's going to do really, really well. He's come up from non-league. He's like a younger version of the Jamie Vardy story. And I really do think he's going to do incredibly well this year. I think this is his time to prove himself because, let's be real, Bournemouth are going to finish 19th or 20th. It depends. If Fulham finish 20th, Bournemouth are 19th. If Fulham finish 19th, Bournemouth are 20th. I think the bottom two are pretty much confirmed. So he needs to prove himself in those draws or in those losses that Bournemouth are definitely going to be picking up this year. And if he can even get a couple of goal contributions and catch the eye of a Nottingham Forest at this day up or a Brentford or a Leeds or someone like that, I don't even think he could prove himself into be a solid Prem player. And I think that he could have a future in the English top flight. Next up is going to be Chelsea and... Um, this one, you could be like, well, he's going to go Kulabali or Sterling. He's signing. No, I'm not. I think I've got to stay truthful to what I think. And what I think is that Mason Mount is the best Chelsea player at the moment. And the reason being is he's young. What is he now? 22, 23? Something about that. And um, he's just an incredibly solid young player. Um, he's a cam, so he's definitely going to be getting lots of goal contributions this year. And um, imagine this, like Kai Havertz up top. Mason Mount behind him with Sterling on the right, Pulisic on the left. That is a very, very strong looking team. Timo Werner can fill in anywhere on there as well. Ziyech can fill in anywhere on there as well. I think that this year is going to be one of Chelsea's um, comeback years. I think is the word for it, comeback year. Because last year we weren't so great, obviously with um, the change of ownership. Ted Bowley's come in here and he's, he's spending money. And that's what you want. You want him to be spending money. You want your owner to want your club to do well. And that's what Ted Bowley wants. And I think with these signings of Sterling and Koulibaly, all that's going to do is boost up Mason Mount even more, to have even more quality players around him. I think Chelsea's back line is going to be great this year. Edouard Mendy in goal. James and Chilwell full-backs with Thiago Silva and Koulibaly in defence. I mean, this Chelsea team this year is definitely going places. And I think Mason Mount is going to be instrumental in that. And that's why I'm saying he's going to be the best Chelsea player of the season. All right, next up, Crystal Palace. Now, I'm going to go Ararici Eze. Um, another cam. I think he's going to do really good this season. I mean, I could have probably gone for Wilfred Zaha or Edward, But if I was to go to Wilfred Zaha, that's pretty much a confirmed solid season. And I want to go with somebody who is proving himself. But I don't think gets enough recognition as he deserves. I think Eze is an incredibly good cam. He's definitely the right quality for Crystal Palace. And there's no Gallagher this year for Crystal Palace. So that this is going to be where Eze is going to have to prove himself even more. He's not got that other, that other quality young centre mid with him. So I think it's going to be a harder year for Crystal Palace. I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's going to be a harder year. Without um without Conor Gallagher, but I think Eze will do the do the job for them. Right, next up, I'm going to be talking about Everton, and for Everton, I've gone for Dominic Calvert Lewin. Now, Dominic Calvert Lewin is one of those players that some seasons does incredibly well. Obviously, the start of not last season, but the season before, Everton were like top, they were on the top of the table for a little bit. They were doing really really well, but. Richarlison's left them now, he's gone to Tottenham Hotspur. So there's going to be even more pressure on Calvert-Lewin to be scoring the same amount of goals that he's expected to score, but also what Richarlison's expected to score. He's not going to have that um, that Brazilian playmaker with flair anymore. And so I think it's going to be a lot harder for him. But if it's difficult to be talking about, it's definitely something that Dominic Calvert-Lewin can deal with. He is great striker I mean I think I've said great a lot but we're on about the greatest players on the team that are going to perform the best this season he is yeah he's, he's a very very good player on his day and if he's able to um to do that throughout the whole season he can pick up an easy 10-15 goals he can single-handedly get Everton into mid-table now sticking on the theme of strikers for Fulham 
I think this one's an obvious one, and it's got to be Alexander Mitrovic. Now, I know that we have one season wonders, right? Just one season when they do it incredibly well, and then they do nothing for the rest of their career. I don't think Mitrovic is going to be like that this season. You can't break championship records for fun and not carry that on into the Premier League. There's no way you can rip up a league apart, but you cannot do it in the league above. I just think that, that just um, that's just impossible. Uh, Alexander Mitrovic, in my opinion, is going to be the best Fulham player. Because I think he's one of the only capable Fulham players. Now, I'm not meaning that in a harsh way, but I hate Fulham. Because they're, yo -yo, they're a yo-yo club. And I think that Mitrovic is going to perform this year. I think he has to perform. This is probably going to be one of his last chances to prove himself in the Prem. So hopefully he can prove himself. Right, Leeds and the first goalkeeper of the the video, Melier. Melier is very young, uh, the French shot stopper, and I think he's going to do a great season. He um, he's an okay goalkeeper. He's decent. He is a decent player, but he's so young, and I think that because of all the experience he's gained at such a young age, being a Premier League starting goalkeeper at the young ages of eighteen and nineteen. I think that he is going to be um, an exceptional goalkeeper. I think he's going to prove himself and he is going to be um, heir to the Reese's throne, being France number one. I do think that, I really do. Um, I mean, I know he's going to have difficulty proving that against players such as Albin Lafont to get into that first team, but no, I think Melier, he's got such a bright future and he's so young. And he is already proving himself in the Premier League. And this year is going to be a standout before me. He had the top 10 saves. Um, he made the top 10 most map saves in the Premier League last year. And he said so he was up there with Edison, with De Gea, with Alisson and Jose Sarr. And I think that you can put uh, Melier in that bracket. Maybe not yet. Not yet, no. But in a good three, four years, I think he will be. I think what people forget is how difficult being a professional goalkeeper in the Premier League is. And if at that young age you're saving shots against people 10, 15 years older than you, you've got you've got an incredible future. And Melia, I think this is going to be his, your standout season. Leicester, and we're talking about James Madison. I said earlier on in the video, the World Cup's going to be a bit of a theme in this. It's not really been until now. But um, James Madison is definitely going to want to prove himself. He wants to get in that England team, as does every other professional player for England, dreams of getting in that England World Cup team. Because I think if England are going to win anything, it's now. This is, this is the golden generation of England, right? This is, it's either going to be this World Cup, the next Euros, or potentially the next World Cup. But this is the one that you want to be in. Because I honestly think that England and Qatar is going to be great like incredible for England uh, it's going to be awesome because there's no Italy in there is there that's a massive nation out the best nation in Europe is not in the actual World Cup tournament right this is going to be the last World Cup of Ronaldo and Messi yeah but who is going to fill up there I think Argentina is a great team a great nation that's going to challenge for it but we're getting off topic we're getting on the World Cup now that that'll be a separate video when it's close to the time who I think is going to win it but, um, yeah, James Madison for Leicester, definitely think can happen. Um, I think he's going to be their standout performer. I do. I think he's going to be the standout performer. Because he is going to have that World Cup in the back of his mind. The whole, the whole uh, start of this year, the whole start of the calendar year. Um, the start of the Premier League season, sorry, not the calendar year. The whole start of the Premier League season. He's going to have that World Cup in his mind and he knows he wants to get there. It's just whether he can prove himself for Leicester. He's got no Europe to worry about now. Um, he can just focus on the Premier League and I think that was Leicester's issue. They focused on Europe and the Premier League and that was sort of their downfall this year. So he can focus on the Premier League and he can make sure that he gets it right and he can get himself into that World Cup team and that's what I think is going to outperform himself this year. Right, one about Liverpool. I think this should be a rather quick one. It's obviously going to be Mo Salah, isn't it? It's always up there between Mo Salah or Sadio Mane. And I think um, I think it's going to be Mo Salah because Sadio Mane is left for Bayern Munich and Nunez is not going to do a thing this year. Um, maybe he will. 
I mean, he did score against Manchester City, didn't he, Darwin Nunez? But he's young. He's not proved himself anywhere except playing for Benfica. And that's not really a good sign, is it, when he's going to be your striker? But I think Mo Salah is going to be... Yeah, there's no words to describe Mo Salah, is there? He's just one of the best players in the world. He, I think he's got... I don't know. He's definitely going to be up there with some of the best. At least in the current world, he's definitely one of the best. Maybe of the decade as well. We'll have to wait and see. He comes through the academies. Depends how well does Ansu Fati play in, in his future. Uh, Pedro Neto, we might be speaking about in a little bit. But yeah, um, Mo Salah, I think he's the only logical one you can go for. So I think we've definitely got to put him in as being Liverpool's best performer this year. Right, Man City. And there's only one name I can really go for. No, I'm joking, there's loads. There's so many players you can go for. And I'm going for Cancelo. Now, I know that's a bit different. Many of you might be thinking, oh, he's going to go for Haaland or, oh, he's going to go for Kevin. But I'm going for Cancelo. He's such a good player. He's an incredible player. He's in my FPL because I just know how good he is. He can play anywhere. Absolutely anywhere. If you put him up top, he'd score. If you put him at the back, he'll make great tackles. He's got to be one of the best players in world football just out of being so well-rounded. And that is a massive, massive talent being well-rounded. So, yeah, um, Cancelo is going to be um, the player that I'm going to go for because I just think he's going to be the best player in that Manchester City, probably title-winning team. Man U. Um, I'm not going to say Ronaldo. I'm going to say David De Gea. And why? Why would I say David De Gea? He's the reason that you finished sixth. You would have finished so much further down if it wasn't for the main man David De Gea. He kept you in it. The amount of mistakes from the centre-backs that he recovered. The amount of everything that he did. He literally, him and Ronaldo, put Man United on their back last season. And being a goalkeeper, that's a hard thing to do. And David De Gea was just just that ex exceptional last year. Absolutely exceptional. And he deserves all the praise he gets. He literally carried Man United with Ronaldo. And um, yeah, I mean, there's not really much more to say, is there? Except he's probably one of the best shot stoppers in the world. Right, Newcastle, it's got to be Bruno Camares, um, came in from Lyon for a decent amount of money. So with the takeover, Mike, Mike Asher had never done that. He'd just let them go back down to the championship and let them sit there. Bruno Camares is an insane player for Newcastle. He's proved it now in the Prem and I think he's going to carry on his exceptional form. Right, now Nottingham Forest, my local Premier League team. I'm going to have to go for Brennan Johnson, honestly. I know they made a lot of signings, and most people will probably go for those signings. And came through the Forest Academy, he's been a Forest fan his whole life. His dad's an ex-Forest player. He's, um, the Welsh international is so good. He's going to be one of the best wingers in the UK. Southampton, I think it's a pretty obvious one. Or Prowse, one of the players that has to carry their club. He loves the club so much. He literally puts, them on their, puts Southampton on his back and carries them. The free kicks he scores is, is in... Oh, it's just too good to even describe. Tottenham. I'm going to go for Hummin Son. He's an incredible winger, Hummin Son. And, um, yeah, I just think he's going to do really, really well this season. He's definitely going to help Spurs out a lot. They made some great signings with Kulisevsi, Benzakir, obviously being in January, those two. Um, they've also got Perisic in for... Was it a free? I think it was a free... They got Bissouma in, Jed Spence in. Yeah, this Tottenham team is looking really, really good under Antonio Conte. And I think Hummin Son is going to be doing his absolute best and just be as world class as he is. So, what, what more can I say than Hummin Son is one of the best players in the Premier League? Second to last, West Ham, Declan Rice. I have to say it, don't I? Being a Chelsea fan, he's obviously heavily, heavily linked with us. He's probably going to come next summer. But Declan Rice is, yeah, he's such a good CDM. He's probably one of West Ham's best players last season. I could have said Jared Bowen. I could have said Mikel Antonio. I could have said Suchek. I actually don't know if he's left or not. To be fair, I don't really keep up with West Ham, surprisingly. Um, But yeah, Declan Rice, yeah, I think he's going to be a great player for West Ham next season. Finally, Wolverhampton Wanderers, Pedro Neto. I sort of hinted when we were talking about Liverpool that I was going to talk about Pedro Neto for, um, for Wolves. He's effectively a new signing, isn't he? He was injured most of last year. He's effectively a new signing. 
and Wolves need that um, need that sort of winger because they can't score to save their life, can they? They can't score to save their life, but they can defend so well. That being Jose Sarr, Connor Cody's actually not, not playing off it, is he? Um, but they definitely need someone that can go up there and score goals. Fabio Silva can't do that, but I think that Pedro Neto is the other Portuguese attacker for Wolves. I definitely think that he's going to be the one this year. He's going to be such a good player, and he's going to be pushing pushing high, high in the assist rankings. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Make sure to smash a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And um, hit the notification bell as well. Much appreciated, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.